Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to another Sunday message. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, again, uh, if you would like to come out to church on Sundays, uh, we don't have a separate youth service. Um, we're in the works of what that will look like, uh, perhaps during the summer, maybe going into the next fall. Uh, but if you would like to come out, you can uh, at 11 o'clock at the EM worship service. So. You'll come out and have service then, and you'll stay throughout the whole service and listen to the message, the sermon as well. And then you'll have your um, Bible study afterwards, whether it's at here or whether you do it online. But yeah, let's go into today's word, um, today's message. Uh, today we'll take a look at the benefits of, benefits of salvation. Um, and hopefully, uh, I pray that you would see it as benefits. Although we can't properly describe fully all the benefits of what that really means, it is helpful for us to just have at least a review of, uh, like a summary of a few of them, just to give us a good idea. Uh, so let me pray before we go into it, and then um, we'll get it started. Let's pray. Uh, God, thank you, Lord, for another day that you allow us to have. Lord, as we uh, go into um, uh, today's word, today's message, about learning more about uh, what um, the benefits are of being uh, having uh, salvation, Lord, from you. And Lord, I pray that we would see them as great benefits and that uh, you would move our hearts, Lord, to be thankful uh, and also just be in awe of your grace that you show to us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so the first benefit is that the believer or the Christian is regenerated. Um, the Bible teaches us that all people are born spiritually dead. Uh, I'm sure you guys learned and heard that many times before, but it's a good reminder. And unwilling to respond to God in love and obedience. We just don't want to do it. Um, those who believe in Christ, however, have been regenerated, or in other words, made spiritually alive, uh, so, they, so that they may walk in newness of life. The believer is now a new creation with a new heart that delights in God and desires to please God. Um, notice the word new, new, right? Uh, this is what born again means. We have not just changed our minds, God has changed our very natures, our very hearts. So that's the first benefit. The second benefit is a Christian is justified before God. This means that not only are we forgiven of our past, present, and also our future sins, but also that the perfectly righteous life of Christ is imputed to us, or in other words, credited to us, is given to us. Uh, although we still struggle with sin, I'm sure you guys know that, uh, and frequent failures throughout our life, God has legally declared us to be in right standing with him, and he treats us that way. So that's the second. The third benefit is that the Christian has been adopted. Um, God is the creator, he's sovereign, and he's the judge of all humanity. To us who believe, however, he is also our father. Through faith in Christ, we have been adopted into God's family, and enjoy all the privilege of uh, being a, a child of God. Uh, and though it may seem too wonderful to be true, uh, God loves us as he loves his own son and gives us also his spirit as a pledge of our future inheritance that we will receive uh, in the future. Uh, fourth, the Christian is indwelt with the spirit of God. We do not walk through this world alone. Christ has sent the Holy Spirit to dwell within us. The Spirit testifies of Christ, teaches, leads, helps, convicts, and serves as a pledge for the fullness of God that awaits the believer in heaven. And through the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ continues to be God with us. Fifth, the Christian has been given eternal life. It is important to understand that eternal life began for us the moment we believed in Jesus Christ. Now, eternal life is more than a quantity of life, meaning, it's, meaning life without end. It is also a quality of life, life in fellowship with God. Six, 
The Christian is God's workmanship. One of the greatest evidences that God has justified us is that He continues to sanctify us, meaning He works in our lives to make us more holy, in other words, to make us become more like Christ. The Bible teaches us that God is directing all things in our lives, even His discipline, so that we will be made more and more like Christ and do good works that He prepared beforehand for us to do. I believe it is a privilege to know that God will be relentless in working for our transformation as we become more like Jesus. Finally, the Christian will be glorified. Our great and certain hope is this, that because Christ did not stay dead, but then he rose from the dead, we also will be raised from the dead and glorified when Christ returns. Our bodies will be transformed like Christ's body and will no longer be subject to sin, death, corruption. There will no be no more pain, no more deficiency, none of that whatsoever. We will forever be with the Lord in a new heaven and a new earth, which, which, in which only righteousness dwells forever. Now, how should we be living then, knowing that these are the benefits that we have of, of salvation? The Bible calls us to live in a manner that is worthy of our calling, to grow in more and more like Christ and to walk in the good works that God has prepared us to do. And now in response to God's mercy, really, honestly, God's mercy, we should present our lives as lives to God, as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God. Now here's what the Bible tells us to do. First, study the Bible. We must grow in our knowledge of God, what Christ has done for us, and what God's will is for us. We must be strengthened in our faith, encouraged in our obedience, and conformed to be more like Christ. And this can only be done through reading, studying, memorizing, obeying the Bible, and being obedient. Two, devotion to prayer. God speaks to us. How does He speak to, speak to us? He speaks to us through the Bible. And we speak to God through prayer. We can do nothing by ourselves, but we can become fruitful by depending on Christ's power and making our needs known to Him in prayer. Prayer is conversing with God. And we are, it includes worship, praise, giving thanks, requests, help. It is conversing and communing with God. Public identification with Christ through baptism is next. We are saved by faith alone, but Christ commands those who believe to publicly identify with Him and His people through baptism. Next, fellowship with a church. It is God's will that all true believers unite themselves uh, with a community of like-minded believers. In other words, in a church. Next, growth in sanctification. The Bible teaches us that sanctification is God's will for us. And for this to become a reality in our lives, we must pursue God through reading the Bible, prayer, fellowship with other believers, and abstaining or turning away or uh, turning aside from the sinful things of this world. Next, service in the church. The Bible teaches that every believer is part of a royal priesthood. In other words, each of us has been given spiritual gifts that are used for building up the local church. We should not merely join a church. We must also serve in the church according to the abilities that God has given to each and every single one of us. Ministry in the church is not only for pastors or deacons. It's for everyone. And lastly, service in evangelism and missions. It is the will of God that the gospel of Jesus Christ be preached to all nations and to every person under heaven. That means uh, not just in our community, in our neighborhoods, in the city, in the state, in this nation, but all around the world. Christ's command has been called the Great Commission, and each Christian is to be committed to this task according to his or her gifts that the Holy Spirit gives to us. 
This includes caring for Christians who are persecuted for the faith, helping those who suffer, and doing works of charity for those who do not believe. Uh, I pray that you will also live and serve like this. Let's pray. Father God, thank you, Lord, for um, uh, your, your message today. Just giving us once again a great reminder of the benefits, the wonderful benefits of being saved. And Lord, uh, what that means for us, how we should respond as well. Lord, as we have learned today, I pray that we will respond uh, in obedience and submission to you. And Lord, may we be obedient to Lord what you have said in your word. Help us, Lord, because we don't want to. Uh, we want to rebel. Uh, that is our nature. But Lord, Holy Spirit, would you challenge us, convict us, change our hearts, Lord, so that we enjoy and desire to be with you and to do all things for you and to be obedient to you. Thank you, God. I pray for your, uh, your students. May they all be experienced that and live that out in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.